That well, countdown feels excessive. Maybe. It's like so long. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, what yeah. So partly it's a, it's a live show. So I gave 25 people a chance to join. Oh, so, that's why we do that. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, were you fixing your hair? What do you do? No, I was just like, uh, now I'm on Amazon and I'm just lost. I just got lost in the, mm-hmm. I was looking at earbuds. Oh. Buying, I want to buy some new earbuds for sleeping. Like, cause at night I wear this, I listen to, to stuff to help sleep. And right Same. now I have this like headband thing. Same. Do you, yep. do, do you have this too? You have this headband? Uh, I have a headband. It's like music cozy. And yes. it's like, oh, yeah. And I feel like it makes me look like such a weirdo. Um, yeah. And so I want to have just like, I just need one in just an earbud. So I don't know, chat, like what are some earbuds I can, something like Bluetooth with long yeah. battery life that are not super uncomfortable. That's what I need. All right. Yeah, I do the same. I'll fall asleep listening to like audiobooks or podcasts and I'll, some, yeah. and then honestly, like this morning I woke up and I was like, oh, I'm not getting up yet. I'm like listening to some podcasts and stuff. So. Oh, yeah. nice. Do you get up and get on your phone for like an I, hour? So that's, that's what I do instead of getting on the phone. You know what I mean? I try not yeah. to get the scroll on the phone. So I'm like actually listening to something that's like going to be like, I don't know, good. <laughs> I've, I've been trying to use just my Apple Watch as my primary means of interacting oh, with, yeah. commu- communicating, right? So phone yeah. calls, text messages, see if I can get my screen time under 30 minutes because I don't think you can, you can't not have a phone, right? Yeah. Because sometimes you need a GPS and sometimes you need to look something up. And But not being able to get on my phone when I'm like watching TV with the family or on the toilet, I'm just being honest. Yeah. Just being honest <laughs> is extremely difficult. That requires a lot of self-control, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm struggling with it, man. It ain't easy. Yeah, I hear you. I am. Um, I some a few approaches I've heard of this. So John Lamb, I talked to him at a conference. He was doing the Apple Watch only thing. That was pretty neat. My daughter switched to a flip phone. And it's oh, like really? a, it's funny, she calls it her construction worker phone. It's like um it's it is an Android phone, but it's like so horrible of an experience that like, <laughs> that you would not attempt to use it past right so she can like text or she can do like low-key stuff on it but she like she totally helps her but i don't know which one does she have i'd be curious it's like a cat i think is the name C-A-T. cat, cat yeah. flip phone cat yeah. flip phone <laughs> while you're looking that up i will uh yeah, so it is are... a construction phone hold on let me sh- <laughs> i'll okay. share my screen wait <laughs> This it's, is it's chat. so this is bad. And it's also like, I mean, obviously battery life is amazing on it because it does nothing. And it, oh, I like, bet it lasts for six months. Uh, yeah. Think. And you can like drop it, you know, drop a sledgehammer on it. That's going to like, you know, nothing can go wrong. All right. Here we are. It's the Cat S22 16 gigabyte. That's it. That's it. Let's check it out. Is it, Can I get it today? Can I get same day delivery? There it is. Look at that, y'all. 67 bucks. So I think, yeah, I think that's what she has. Hers might even, yeah, I think that's it. But hers, yeah. She may even have a cheaper, like less capable one. <laughs> like Caterpillar <laughs> makes this? Isn't that yeah, the same logo or no? I don't know. No, it's not. It's just, uh... yeah, but look, there's an actual, constru- look at this, construction worker. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Wow, that does look like a... Oh, yeah, it is an Android phone. (laughs) The thing is, like, I like my Apple Watch because I can put music on it. Yeah, sure. Uh, Right? And I have Apple Family. All the kids have an iPhone, which is probably a terrible idea, but it's like that Pandora's box is open now. Hold on. Now we're looking up the Nokia 8. Nokia 8. Anyone? 105G. Okay. This one here. This is what Janisku has. Oh, he's got 4G. Yeah. What the heck is going on with this thing? Why is the bottom of it so... What is this? Oh, it slides up. That looks like from the Matrix. It does. Yeah. I don't know that... I mean, I'm going to be honest, man. That looks a little too big. Like, I don't know that I want that in my pocket. 
I don't know. I don't know. Well, hey, well, yeah, sorry, we should move on, shouldn't we? We have things to yeah. do. Okay, so go, browse to the URL list and let's introduce it because we always get people, we got to make a few disclaimers. So this show, five years ago, you and Cecil created this site. It allows you for sharing a bundle of links. You can add several links, get one URL for it, share it out. Yep. And it's built on some kind of old technology. So you built it with Vue, which is totally cool, but we're as we're updating it, we're looking at Blazor. And we're also doing this with the modern static web apps. Because before you did this with Azure Storage and Azure Front Door and kind of a bunch yeah. of stuff. Yeah, it's today. all bubblegum and bailing wire, as they say on the back end. Yeah. It's not pretty. So the one other very important disclaimer we have to make every week is this is a live coding show. We have not pre-written this. We have not practiced it. We're going to make a bunch of coding errors. We're going to frustrate you. The chat is going to help us debug our code live. It is not a polished experience at all. If that's what you crave, you go click you're gonna, one of yeah, the buttons. You'd be very yeah. disappointed. <laughs> yeah. we're just All we're doing is bringing you into what we would be doing anyway, which is porting this thing, because we need to do a lot of other stuff with it. Exactly. And in its current state, it hasn't been touched in so long that we're afraid to touch it. And so we want to move it to something that we feel comfortable about. So yeah. today... We're working on, well, so first of all, you made a pull request. I did. And that I rejected so last week. You did. You rejected it for good reasons because it did basically, it, it it didn't work. It works better now. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so what we do now is we at least return the JSON document. It does return like error or succeed. You can test it by going to the, the link. Um, so what, what is the, let me see, what change did John make? He changed two files. Uh, he added a reference to MVC core. So that was because Cecil's um, validation logic used some MVC native stuff. And I was like, sure. Why not? Keep, okay. Yeah. And then he removed some of this stuff here. Yeah, because it was added. unused. Okay. Oh no! Actually, it just sorted those. It's it's just they're still there. Yeah. Are they? Oh yeah. I just put it at the top. Yeah. Okay. And then your this so is the validation. validation. Yep. And this just validates that it's a valid URL, right? Yeah. Uh, validates the the vanity regular expression, so it allows only letters and digits. I think we can change that. But, um, I. So there's an update there in that one where I added something to allow returning the response. Oh, made it async. I made it async. So you're actually returning. Instead of returning a, a worthless message, now it returns the actual JSON response. When you so, save a link. Okay. Yeah, when you save. Otherwise, it returns this bad response thing. So you at least get a 500. Well, oh. shall we try it out and see if it works? Yeah. All right. There's definitely code in there I'd want to refactor, but it at least adds in these the binding logic that we had before or the validation logic. And, you know, I did on my machine that's saved to the database. It works on your machine. All right. Yeah. I had to go through and clean up a bunch of um, <laughs> tests. Last words. I'm going to move this over. We're on the right. Yeah, this is this is the other project I've got going on right now in chat, which is I'm building uh I'm building <laughs> I'm automating myself out of a job. We nice. should do a different stream on that. All right. Well, what is your, it's a chat thing or it's a yeah, it's like um well, I've actually got it running over here. I think I can pull it in and show you, but like this is me doing testing. Um you can pull in and so hey, Chad, this is what I'm doing, but like Let's like let's go to code.visualstudio.com and like we have these updates. So let's let's take this one, right? So let's grab this URL. So the idea is you slap a URL in and then it pulls in the are just the body of that page, right? Because mm -hmm. browsers have this ability to do like a read a read read mode. You know what I'm talking about? Where you like you click the look, you click this thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. I use that all the time. Immersive reader, just right here, okay? So 
Mozilla releases a library that lets you do that and pulls it out. And then you can edit all this. But the important thing is, is what this does is it uses Azure OpenAI and it grounds the model in this source so that we can then come over and like we need to, I, should, I need to see there's so much UI that needs to be done, but we would say like <laughs> write a blog post <laughs> based wow. on the release notes from Visual Studio Code. Uh, I want to see your tweet because write a tweet it's funny yeah. when it writes tweets because it kind of like goes nuts with the hashtags and see mm. like it's working but you don't know that it's working because there's no visual mm. I need to put yeah. like a you know the the bouncing dots or whatever but yeah, I don't yeah. even know look like it's it's not responding okay I don't know what's going on we All gotta right, move on but anyway yep. yeah when it works it writes a blog post oh there it is nice <laughs> Yeah, and it includes images and just like wow. just copy paste into LinkedIn. Bam. Bam. That's nice. Let's do a tweet. Okay. Well, and then we'll move on out of this. This is what I've been doing instead of doing my actual job. Because I figure yeah. if I do this, I never have to work again. Don't tell anyone that you did now you now you've blown it. You've 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 confessed I've live. Told, I've told everybody. I don't care, y'all. I'm just being <laughs> honest. Right, if you could automate, look, here it is. <laughs> Discover all the hidden gems in VS Code's latest update. But look at this, VS Code, coding community, VS Code, coding life, code revolution, coding revolution. code hero. And, and the thing is like, I can't get it to stop doing this. <laughs> like, you can tell it, do not include any hashtags and it just completely ignores it's just like, I know Okay, I moving on, we're out of here. We're back to the point. Yeah. So we were going to look at the pull request. request. Yeah. Test it out. So I need, where's the GitHub pull requests and issues? My, my VS Code is always in a some sort of state of, where is it? There it is. It's just called GitHub now. So this is the one add validation to save links. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is nice. Okay. So let's check out your branch. Uh, and let's try it out. Well, you can do that. You can also test directly against the live URL because it created a function endpoint for us too. True. That's true. But yeah. I was thinking that it, it would be better not to do that because I was going to run it through a bunch of documents out of the database. After. Well, I was going to run it through Thunder Client, and there's no, there is no way to test it from. Yeah, there, there is. I was testing it this morning. So is it, it's going to let you call it from like just an HTTP test file. Uh, yeah, or like Shouldn't, I just pasted JSON in. I guess because there's no security on it, so it's just going to let anybody stuff anything in there, isn't it? Right now, yes. I mean, yep. Don't, don't do that, y'all. <laughs> now I'm afraid to show the URL again. Not that I don't yeah, trust yeah. the chat. I don't so, trust the internet. Yeah. There you go. Um, well, let's try it. Um, okay. And then we'll have to clean up. We won't have to do anything because chat's on the up and up. So let's pull this in. So that's the endpoint, and then if you do like slash API, API slash what? Say, links, links I think. right? And it would be a post. So let's do, I think we did Thunder, we used Thunder Client. Yeah, you got me turned on to Thunder Client now. I've been using yeah, that. it's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. And Ranga, it's like one dude that makes this extension, huh. which is crazy. Uh, so let's see, Thunder Client. So I'm, I'm just, I use all the things, and when I'm on Visual Studio, when, full Visual Studio, what do we call it? Full fat Visual Studio. Um, I'm using the HTTP file, but then in VS Code, I've been using this. So here's our we're posting to that, and yeah, and what I did wrong, and I was confusing myself. I copied that top line that had that post, so it wasn't valid JSON, and it was wonderful. Okay, so for the body, yep, it's our content. Let's change it to something else, though. Let's change it to like. Ooh, whoa. Okay. Yeah. Why is it putting that at the front? That's odd. Okay. Well. Huh. Okay. 
I can't change it. What's it, happening? I don't know. It doesn't know where the <laughs> cursor is. All right, so we'll be putting another document in. So I test four. If we look so at I changed my, what I did on mine was I put in a user ID so it was easy to find. Or not, whatever. Oh, here? Yeah. The thing is, like, <laughs> what is happening there? I don't know. Ranga, I just talked up your extension and now it's yeah. throwing me shade. It's doing things. Um, let's try that again. Maybe now? about maybe delete there we go oh. <laughs> User ID. you just kind of you just have to guess what the cursor should be <laughs> look okay. not, not everything's perfect no okay um test four we'll leave that mm -hmm. and i'm gonna just want to peek in the database and see what's already in there uh it's the top one it's the top one that's right thank you so we've got test yeah. 101 and test five. So test four should go. So let's send it, not send that, but send, send it. that. So this is really cool with Azure, with static web apps, it creates a separate deployment, a separate URL for each pull request. So it's actually like, you don't have to, like you can directly test it there. Right, yeah, but without messing with production. Yep. Not found. 404. What the? Okay, maybe let me look at what the, should it be. Wait a minute. Did I do a it's a get. It should be a post. Yeah. Oh. Suspending. Little cold start action. Okay, there we go. 200 so okay. And it returns. Document. Yeah. So then let's look in our documents. We should have some more documents. Refresh. We do. All right, we so do. now we have test four. There it is. So now, now, if we try this again, it's probably going to throw a five hundred. Unfortunately, not. First, it's it's it allows you to create the same vanity URL over and over, and I'm not sure. Okay, how. but it does validate, right? So if we come here and say in the body that like the vanity URL we want first. is, um. It should do that. Right? Put, that, this should fail. I hope. Bad request. But okay. the only thing is it doesn't say why. Yes. OK. So in the response, do we need to say why? Um, well, yeah. We should say URL validation failed. Something like that. Is there any instance in which the in which the front end would receive a four hundred from this? That is, see, because I think with like the principles of REST, we mm -hmm. don't want to determine what the error is based on the message unless it's just a generic. In other words, if you can't find the i, if the item isn't found, that's a four hundred four. If it's Structured and valid, 400 bad request. Maybe that is the right status code. I don't know, chat. What do you think? Yeah, that's interesting. We could also look at what we did before, which isn't necessarily certain that's right. But also, like, Javier, Javier said the ID in the response was null. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's let's check it out. ID and the response is no. That's not good. But the user ID is right. User ID is right. So what's happening is ID is getting mapped to, no, that's right, user ID and user ID, but why is ID null? Because- Well, yeah. So this is, we're getting to that issue where there's two ways to interact with document DB from an Azure function. One is through the bindings where stuff just magically happens. And the other is where you use the document client. You're very declarative, right? And say, check they, this. They this. got IDs. And we're going to need these. Going to need that ID. 
yeah to query for a couple reasons one so that we can delete a specific link from mm -hmm. a list no yes and yeah so that we can manage lists we do need that id yeah well so we can merge this pull request and then like fix that bug or log an issue okay let's do that so you know what I mean? yeah Because there's there's going to be several things we're going to need to fix on this. We need the vanity right. URL needs to be unique. We need to improve. The, we need to make sure that their messaging is what we need for the front end. Um, I'm not sure what other sort of validation errors. There's some interesting things too with the previous way of Azure Functions. It could just return a, a thing called a problem response, which is an actual like. Um, industry standard way of returning responses. And that's actually not directly supported anymore. So then there's weird. I don't think, honestly, we need that. We just need to make sure that our return values are what we, what the front end needs, right? Yeah. Because there's only one client that's ever going to use this AP, this function. It's the... Maybe, or may, but maybe we there's an API that, programmatic API that we allow people to call I did think about that. Like, for instance, it'd be neat to create like a browser extension or something. Yeah, exactly. Or a iOS or Maui, whatever y'all call that. Yep. App. This may be happening, dude. So this was probably on the, the Thunder Client. Yeah, maybe you're right, Distal. Yeah. Okay. So right. we've merged that. I don't think we're going to tackle any more API stuff today, though, right? Today. Yes. Today we're going to look, what, no, just hang out there. We're going to look at the front end. Uh, so. So you need to pull that code locally, right? I mean. Uh, do I? Yeah, you're probably right. Probably. I mean, lots of changes. <laughs> what? All right. So we want to serve the front end. Why not? You misspelled. Oh, it's dot. Is it dot net? It's dot net watch. Watch, yeah. I've been working with you too much. Uh, you know, there's some. There have been some cool projects. People have created some like folder server. You know, basically like just serve this, this create a local server out of this folder. Um, All right, and then let's pop that here. We'll look remarkably the same. You yep, yep. know because we have a to-do up here. Uh, and then let's start the API. So I'll just rename this. OK, so API, we're going to do func start. I want to understand that more, because I don't know why it needs you to pass in that C sharp. I don't Are know, but it definitely does. Around? Port seventy seventy one is unavailable. I'm I may be running it somewhere else. Um, which, by the way, Chad, you see me do this a lot. If you use uh, a Linux based system, this is how you figure out what the port is. Lsof dash i, and then you can do. You don't have to put. You can put TCP, but it by default it's just the colon. It that's what it assumes. Anyway, nine one nine nine three. It's a good thing to commit to memory because you'll you'll run into this a lot. And then let's kill. No, miss the L. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. There's a, here's another option. Just reboot. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would work. Seventy seventy one's unavailable. Lies. Reboot. It's, it's probably, probably, you know what it is? It's, it's still running from the funk. It's this over here. Oh. Get out of this. Just stop. This is the, this is the, let's try Do to you use 7071 in all your projects? Yeah, because that's the default. So yeah. I didn't change it.
Okay. We're live. Um, okay, so there's a couple things you need to do, chat. So let's go to the page where it actually displays the links. Mm -hmm. So there it's working. And in this case, this is the published page. So it's the page that people see when they come here. And yep. if we compare that to what's here, what people see is the title, mm -hmm. which in our case, we don't actually have. They don't see links, they see the title, right? And then there's some social icons and then there's these two icons, one which shows a, a way too big QR code and the other one which is just the standard view. So yeah. what we want to do is fix up our published page so that it looks more like this. I totally didn't know that that QR code was even there. I oh, really? Been, I should have been using that. That's, that's a cool feature. I know. But you know, I was thinking later in for the Blazor version, we could do this. This is part of the save thing it actually is creating a png on the back end and stuff but you could do that just directly on the front end it is doing it on the front end actually i saw some stuff in the function where it's actually creating a png i wasn't sure why because like i don't think it makes a call for that qr let's see pretty sure so let's refresh and then if we hit, what is this? I don't know. So, and then if we hit QR code, is that this thing? That's the request you are on. See, I don't see, there's me, build 2019. Here's all the links. I don't know. I did, I'm almost I did. certain this is happening on the front end. So there is stuff in there where it's creating a yeah. Um, a Someone did open a PR, but I think I implemented it on the front end because oh, it was okay. that makes me happy. Relatively easy to do. Yeah. Um, but I appreciated the without the PR, we never would have thought to do that. So there was definitely value in the PR. Cool. So let's just start working on this. So um, maybe it would help if we put these two things side by side. I'm buying this phone. Yeah, you got to get it. Yeah. And let's close Should get you my kid's affiliate link. So this is what we want. This is what we've got. So, yeah, step one, we should bind that title. Okay. So let's bind the title. First, so first of all, we don't want links. Mm -hmm. Let's go to our client. It is the pay. Is it a page? Yes. It is the public page and it says links. So we don't want this. You could, yeah. So let's look at the what we're binding to. It's link bundle, link bundle dot something. But it should be up here. This is way yeah. too far down. So yeah. at this point, let's look at what the other application is doing. Uh, nope. Open. I, I don't even know. I don't know how to use VS Code. How do I VS Code? <laughs> it's always fun. Like so, I I would jump straight to the browser tools and inspect. I could, but I want to see because this is already solved. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So I just want to implement oh, it the same way. Doing. Gotcha. Just so we know the difference between the two, we'll swap profiles. We were I using the white one. What was it called? It was like Papyrus. <laughs> oh, that's a language. Okay. No. Um, summertime? Summer. Summertime theme. No, I, I forget what it was. It was a good one. Nobody makes light themes anymore. Look at this. It's all dark. All right. Um, so what are we doing over here? Let's see. On the 
so it's in the title on the public page, which is the. So this is going to be in the. Oh. Link list, is... maybe. I just can't get with the red theme. I was having a big argument with James on my team recently. Well, it's an ongoing argument. He was he was using red theme all the time for a while. I couldn't stand it. Red theme? There's a, yeah, there is like a red theme. I think he may have. <laughs> contributed to that. So list details, we have the ad bar and input link title. So we don't want this. So maybe the list form? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Are, so that says links. Why it say that? It does say that, but that's not because that isn't I freaking forget how this thing even works, man. Um, this is why, y'all, this is why it has to be rebuilt because. <laughs> so let's look here. Add new link. Uh, link header says Does link. Does it get overwritten? Or is that in the in the edit view, it's going to show links. Maybe there, it is. there it is. Uh, so it's a different page. It's called okay. list. So if, so first of all, this is the not found. Oh, it is the found. It's the inverse of not found. Don't do not, that. Not found. Do not do that. <laughs> that will have to be fixed directly. Yeah. So, okay. So we have a page. In our case, case we've called the page public, which I think is a better description. Okay. Uh, no, just give me, there we go. And so what we want to do here it's is... confusing to me because it is public, but it allows edit. So it's not totally the public thing. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we just pulled over the wrong markup here. So let's mm -hmm. pull in... First of all, first of all, we have a container main content... We don't want that. We want a container. Um, let's get this out of here for now. Ooh. Get that out of there. And yeah. then we should then search we the current binding. We should search the project for V dash. Because I see VF in there in a few places. Yeah, just to get this, the old stuff out. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's collapse this. Let's go here and just let's just pull in all this stuff because it's not that complicated. The yeah. only thing that we need to do is really loop over it, which is right, right, right here. So let's take out this condition, the not found condition. Okay. First, we'll go back and work on that. And then here, the current list. Do we have the current list? We have the vanity no. URL. We have a link bundle. We have the link bundle. Okay. So it would be link bundle dot description. Yeah. And it shouldn't be in the in the mustache handlebar business. Oh, that's right. It's just like this. No, it's, it's razor. That sign. that sign. Like this. Yeah, I think that's right. I don't think we call it, it link bundle. It's link, link bundle dot something. Yeah, let's see here. Description. Description. From. What it unhappy. Predefined type system string is not defined or imported. Whoa. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like that's bogus. I'm not paying attention to that. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, this accounts for mobile. If current list.links is greater than zero. So this div only shows if there that are. That is correct. So in this case, we could do be, right. Yeah. Uh, it's the right syntax. No, you can get rid of the print of the surrounding parentheses. Pretty sure. Yes. And then open and close. 
Like that, yeah. I think it's leading you right. Let's see. Is that what this is doing? Class. Now it's unhappy because there's the mismatched divs. Yeah, so let's do um, ID equals share because we need this. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's you know it's showing this div, and we need this class as well. Um, it's throwing me off with all the red squiggles. I know. I'm sorry. I'll refresh the editor in a moment. Hopefully, that'll go away. Okay, so then inside of that div, we want these anchors, which show the sharing buttons. That's all they are. They're just anchors. There's nothing fancy happening there. So Copilot's pretty wrong here. Okay. And then we can take all of this and kill it. Mark's saying, shouldn't there be a count on the links? Yeah, there it should be a count on the links. That is right. And then going down, column is half, ID is view. If, same, same thing. So if the current list of links is greater than zero, yeah, and on that count, I think count is a property, not a method. So I don't think you need the parentheses after it. All right, let's see. Yo, look. I read a one squiggly. What? <laughs> uh, links. See, list. It's not found, so we need to... You, oh, we can probably solve this like the old-fashioned way. Nope. Sure. <laughs> what? It should know, right? Copilot should know. No, it's just going to want to put the whole thing up there. All right. They're there. It's there. What? It's here. Yeah. What do you have to do before? Just closing and opening the file? Does that just reopen the editor? Yeah. yeah. I feel like this. Oh, is... show, the, show that tip off, though. That's a good one. Oh, you're running also. You're still running. Or is that yeah. just the is that okay? that's not okay? Maybe not. Sometimes hot reload gets unhappy. Oh. All right. Well, let's keep going down here. So here we're gonna do the same exact thing. I'm just gonna copy, copy paste coding for the win. And then we have a div. And we don't need this. And then the rest, so, uh, so this is where it gets kind of interesting. So the class, we have a class binding. So this is the QR code, which I mm -hmm. think I'm gonna comment this out for now. It makes sense. Or rather, display nine. I'm gonna take this off. You know what? I'm just going to leave these two things because I don't think that this is going to hurt Blazor if I remove this like this, and then we'll know we need to come back and fix this. Okay. And then here, view as QR code, what? view as list. Okay, so this is these are the buttons that toggle. We just don't want them to do anything right now. The rest of it can can stay as is. All right, so assuming that's that, we are missing a div somewhere, a closing div, and I'm going to zoom out, see what's going on here. And that's a lot of markup. See, I wonder, could you ask Copilot which div isn't closed? Or yeah, so we could say, like, See, but it is matched, isn't it? Or no, it's not. It's not. Yeah, see, it can't even. I wonder if we could just say. Yep. <laughs> Please, I like how you added that. I, I try to be nice. Yeah. I feel like, it's just, read... well, I feel like it's just here. 
I finally read that Stephen Wolf or Wolfram um, thing. How does Chat GPT work? Have you read that yet? It's pretty. Uh, no, is it good? It's good. It's took like three cups of coffee to get through. It's a long one. <laughs> yeah, look, all it did was add the div. That's the closing div. All right, thank you. Um, it's because you said please. <laughs> yeah, that's why. So I don't know, though. It still looks unhappy. Yeah. So, I mean, I would, I would restart the editor because you can do that so quick, and then we'll know if it's the editor or not. So what? So now it's happy. I don't know. It's it's restoring. No, the formatting is still off. So if we, so we'll. Oh. It's this is right. The outer one. Yeah. Right. And we have div, inner div, inner div. Those are right. This div, we have an H2. We have this inner div. That's right. What are your opinions on using things like, in addition to divs, using like main and article? And I mean, you should do that, the semantic markup. But yeah. in, like, what would you call this then? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> See, that's always the thing. It's like, I don't know. Is it an article? Is it a side? It doesn't really matter. Oops. It doesn't totally matter. Really you know, happy. I guess what, it matters more when you are using things like accessibility or, you, you know, maybe that like um, immersive mode or stuff like that. I wouldn't, I shouldn't have asked now. That's like a refactor. But see, and look, it's, it, why it, is it marking? So if, yeah. look, it doesn't oh, like the I should have said that. Sorry. That's my fault. You need open and close. And then that's below. Why is that an open brace? That should be a closed brace. I think it should be doing all of this. I'm 58, yeah. This div closes That's, off. I saw that earlier, and then I'm like, I got to remember to say that, and I did not say that. There we go. Yeah. That, that looks happier now. Um, so because there's no formatter for Blazor, syntax in Visual Studio Code, because normally what you do is mm. you just fix divs, and then when you get it right and you save, it it, it formats it. It's, yeah. But we can't do that, and that is tough. Why is there not a razor formatter? I got to ask about that. That doesn't sound right to me. Do you, and you have all the latest dev kit stuff, right? The latest C-sharp dev yeah, kit? Yeah, I do. Okay. Razor snippets. I mean, there's not even a. Does it have a formatter? I'm going to ask Dan Ruth. The drop in for HTML class completion. Yeah, and let me just make sure I have the latest version of the dev kit. We can go to pre-release. I'm chatting with Dan Roth. I want to nerd snipe him into our into our call. <laughs> code editing, refactoring, code completions. So you know this. So Victor saying C sharp and VS Code wasn't a good experience. Well, we're working on fixing that, right? That's that's a big thing with the C sharp dev kit. They just, um, I was just editing a thing for like the next release of it. They're doing like monthly releases and yeah i mean there's so many formatters but none of them for c for release for the dev kit we can it doesn't say there's a formatter but maybe there is yeah. it knows it's razor If I say format this document, what's it going to use? Configure. That's because we. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. Oh, it formatted it. 
Um, but it added four spaces here, but not here. <laughs> what? Format. <laughs> what? Format, damn it. what? It's just bumping this stuff out. <laughs> yeah, I keep what doing, that. doing that. <laughs> Format. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, you're having too much fun. It just, it's just making things worse. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, stop it. Okay. So uh, then we have this. This is the not found. So that's the V dash F. So you could change it. Yeah. That. So we need to change this to F. Mm -hmm. We do this a lot. This code has been written three times now. You know, there are ways too that you can like use an attribute to set a class or display or not like in the thing. Whoa, look what it, it wants to write a lot of code there for you. Yeah, we're not we're not going to do <laughs> hardly any of that. All we need is this. Oh, there's a not found component, but that we can include. It won't hurt anything. Um, and then we'll just talk. Uh, Put a label there. Okay, so if uh, link bundle dot links that count, yes, I do want all of this, and then buzz off. <laughs> I don't want the rest of it. So Anoop saying it's not formatting's not working because of all the view code that's in there. That's definitely oh. Possible. So we'll, look, look. Okay, fine. We'll comment this out. Look, we're gonna put an H one here. Not found. And so and there are some comments on that, like. It's still view. I think there's there's a few things. Like one is like, yeah, it's using some of the view like syntax. And then there's other things where it's like we could refactor to make like this is spiritually still view code in the way it's structured in some ways. Like we could it'd be interesting, like after we get this going to refactor and maybe get Dan or somebody on to help us go like more. Because for instance, I chatted with Dan about it, uh, one thing, and he was like, you could be using um, the um, input form input elements, and they do like validation automatically for you, and you know some stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. And Dan would know; I would yeah. not. So we <laughs> deleted some some HTML that I need because, like, let's go back here. What I want is the for loop where is it is it the original there it is this is what i want because we deleted this for each and then delete I... this list mm -hmm. and then let's close these out don't save don't save you know i'd be interested too the way we converted the like sas to uh, css I'd be interested for some view code to say, like, convert this from view to Blazor and see what see how well it does. OK, yeah, I like that. So in here, we're passing in the link. We have a link list element. I, I think this is a little different now. We're saying for each, we've got a bundle item. And then a button below that. Mm -hmm. which allows people to delete the list. Um, let's see what else we can get. So it, are you saying it doesn't like this stuff? Maybe, I don't know. All right, fine, look. Look at this. And now it's mad about <laughs> so bad. Hmm. Now it's mad about, there's so much markup in this page. Yeah. Yes, there is. I think in some ways, like it's it's a multi-purpose page. It's a public display and an edit page. And it's good and it's bad because then you end up with tons of conditional and if it's this or if not, or you know. It but it's it's I mean, it's just deciding what to show and what not to show. But it's like if a list has no links, do we really care? to conditionally show things like you can show an empty list. Why not? Yeah. Right. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> right. <Solution zero. laughs> Why do we care? I feel like we can take a lot of this stuff out because 
logically it just doesn't make sense to have it in there. And these need to be pushed out a little bit. There we go. <laughs> I am the formatter. Um, mm -hmm. And then here, let's do that same thing where it's like, just, I don't want to do this at all. And let's get rid of this too. Here, oh, I didn't. I you didn't, can't show a QR. Yeah, I didn't comment this right. So let's be happier about that. Okay. And I do the same thing here. These buttons are wrapping spans, which also, mm -hmm. I don't know that you should do that. Yeah, I don't know that you need a span. You could just use a button, right? Is that I don't know why that's too? like that. Oh, uh, the to do is messing this up. And razor is so finicky. Um, okay. And then let's. Just oh, you know, turn. yeah, that's. Well, yeah, it's got that at star. Yeah. We've commented this stuff out, and I know that this is working because it's like rebuilding over here on the left. Y'all can't see it, but I can see it. So. Assuming I'm like balancing the displays because I don't <laughs> want to over there. You go. Assuming a lot. Let's pull up. Okay, so we're starting to look like mm -hmm. right, but we don't have our description up here. Uh, yeah, which but... are we getting a description? Where's my response? No, that's not right. That's the page. This is mm -hmm. it. Description, nothing. Okay, so but let's... Oh, oh, yeah, 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 okay. I don't know if we actually pushed a description in, though, so let's add one. We're pulling in test... Test, you know what? Easy enough. We'll just test 101, which actually has a description. No. Mm, that says links. Is that the description? No. It's an unhandled error. Un What's the unhandled error? Is it because that response contains bad fields? Let's see. Where's the request to the server for this list? And why does this look... I feel like it can't find... Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to, let, let's do this. Like stop and restart it. ID, vanity URL, description, user ID. Is it because they're like, let's, let's take this and compare this to this one. What was I using? Test one, test one. So you could just edit the description in the document. I could, but why is this not working? There's no reason why this would not work. There, it's it's literally the same thing. Yeah. Do, do we have a rude edit? We could have a rude edit. It. I mean, it starts so fast. It's like an easy enough thing to. Yeah, but sometimes it, you know, it airs on me, and then I. Tells me I'm not allowed to access the project anymore. It kicks me out. It's like you're a bad developer, buddy. Get out of here. You have one shot. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. So yeah, it is just you know other feedback for Dan. 
<laughs> that should just work. Yeah. So we, but so now we're pulling in a description, but we don't see it. We should see it. Link bundle dot description. Why don't we see it? Yeah, that yep. H2 is empty. Dan got back to me and said, we ship Razor tooling for VS Code as part of the C-Sharp ex extension. <clears throat> oh, well, Dan. I think we're good now, though, right? I think so. But yeah. why is it not showing our description? What is wrong? So there's no description on the link bundle in the database. For that. There is. For which for one? one, one for test 101, there is. This is yours. Test 101, let's look. Oh, no, there's not. Yeah. <laughs> What's the one that has a dis Oh, the description was here. Description on the link and the link bundle. Here, yeah. All right, test 101. Um, so you can just directly edit there, right? Yeah. Does anybody get this reference? Anybody? Drop it in the chat. Drop it in the chat if you get this. All right. But it's morning. Uh, and then we should be able to save it and it uploads it to Cosmos TV. Yeah, it, you can see it spinning. Yeah. Okay. So Dan's uh, saying we have issues with error recovery in our Razor tooling. If there's a small syntax error, it can make everything invalid. We're working to improve the Razor compiler so we can improve the error recovery logic and heuristics. That's I mean, that's a guy that sounds like he knows what he's doing. Dude, I work with Dan a lot and he is like, so reliable <laughs> and helpful. You can say a lot of nice things. Wow, look at that. We have a description. Now, if you remember, the we, we need to get rid of this stuff here because we don't need this. And that is a, a bundle. The question here, was that a tenacious D reference? Yes, it was. Who said that? That was. Who said that? Jacob. Maybe, maybe Jacob. Impressive. Well done. Okay. Nice. Okay, we made some progress there. So what I want to do is, not that, um, I want to pull out, so let's go to our link bundle. Link bundle. Bundle item. Bundle item. And in the bundle item, if you see, look at how much markup is in here. And the reason <laughs> for this is that we are trying to cram multiple pieces of functionality into the same component. That's what I'm saying, yeah. We're, I we're feel like we can componentize and, yeah. An edit experience and a display experience. That's what I was trying to say earlier, yeah. Look, this is a good attribute, yeah. Hunger Games is the... <laughs> 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 to volunteer i volunteer as tribute yeah. <laughs> okay so in here we have an image all of this is fine it's here where it starts to get let's see it's here so there's an input that is either editable or it's not editable And the, the reason for this, though, John, is that let's back up because this is an architectural change that can affect a lot. Okay. In the case of this, let's do an, I think it would be, hello, uh, inspect. And then let's look at one of these components so we can see what is actually happening here. So... This thing is actually, so here's the image, but if we go here, there's div soup. <laughs> but yeah. inside of these things, here's the figure. This must be for mobile, right? These are all, these aren't just labels, they're inputs. And the that's, reason, yeah. Yeah. And that's because what I do is, yeah, I put an overlay on top of the whole thing. 
to make uh, it so that if we yeah. log in, then it's editable and the overlay goes away, right? That's exactly right. All we got to do is hide the overlay and the whole thing becomes editable. And I feel like that's kind of smart, right? Hmm. Instead of having two components, we have one and then we just conditionally show and hide these things. I mean, I guess it's not really hard to make a component and then you have like if you they're, they're gonna be fundamentally different components, it's gonna be almost the same markup and layout. And look at look at the div soup that it takes to do this, right? So there's like flex box columns. Yeah. I just don't want to do this twice. And I'm gonna well, fight for this implementation. <laughs> okay. What well, do you think? So I kind of feel like it's not hard to make a component because you've got part of why you've got div soup and complexity is because it's this multi-purpose component, right? You've got a component that's both. Edit no, no, that's no. All, so if we changed this, we would have the exact same markup. The only difference is instead of inputs, we would have labels. That's it but the markup would stay the same. Okay. And then you just disable all the input. Well, we would be able to, so, okay, let me be fair. We would be able to remove the sort icon on the left, mm -hmm. the X on the right. We would remove the overlay and we would switch the inputs to labels. And then as a result of that, you would have simpler layout in CSS because you're not having to make input pretend like it's a label. Well, let's look. Like has gray text and... Let's look here. So... Oh, this is our bundle item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is right. So this is the delete button. I mean, let's in a work. way, it's already written, but there's there's all those classes in there, right, that are like... I'm looking. I mean, either way works. It's possible to refactor it later. Um, if, if you were doing this from scratch today, I would argue not to, I would argue to do. See, here, here's what we'd have to do. There's an if statement. So I'm going to mark this. Look. Mm -hmm. uh, Here's what we'd have to change. If statement here, okay. Jeez, stop that. This is the left-hand side drag icon. Mm -hmm. Let's collapse the rest of this. Okay. In this case, let's find the actual has great text delete. This is the delete icon, right? Mm -hmm. So here right here. Well, in the whole column, well, I guess maybe not. Uh, you're right. You are you are exactly correct. It's the whole column. Which uh, which key was that that you hit to swap that line up? Uh, this is just option or alt. So you can just I move see. lines up and down. Cool. So that, that takes off the X and the sword icon with conditional if statements. The only other thing is the overlay. Mm -hmm. And the overlay is here. So All right, so that's what we would be changing in this file. We would have if statements here, uh, here, here, and here. If we create a new component, remove this column entirely. Actually,
we remove this column entirely. Right, so this comes out, this comes out, and this comes out. So that's all the markup that we would be deleting. Yeah. Well, I, one other thing is you could, although I don't know how feasible it is, you could simplify your CSS as well because you don't have to, there's a decent amount of CSS in there probably. No, I think the CSS stays the same. Let's see, link wrapper, link editable. That's what I'm talking about, the link editable stuff. See, well, that's another thing to consider. All the de we, disabled, all the disabled stuff. If we refactor this, we got to refactor the CSS too. Yeah. I think there's a good argument for port it, get it up and running. And then once the site's up and running, then we or somebody else can pull requests and say, hey, I converted you know what i mean yeah so it's not all the same page yeah i agree with you i think it's going to take us like an entire block and another stream to just convert that to two separate components yeah and i don't know that i see the value of that okay, right now okay. other than i agree with the conceptual value that these these two concerns being munged into one are not good for maintainability if nothing That's, else yeah all right, so let's implement this stuff. So we're basically going to say if editable, and editable has to be passed into this component. Okay. We have to pass it in as a prop, which we're not currently doing. OK. How are you passing it in? It's a, so it's a component. OK, right. so you can just set that property. You can do um, right. We can just say editable here. And it's by default, so it's just parameter, right? Yeah. Parameter. No. Um, public bool editable is false, right? But I think we want, we're in C sharp world, so it should be like that, right? Yep. Or no, it's small, it's lowercase e. Either, I mean, either works. So first of all, we want to do a class here that it conditionally applies, and gosh, Freaking okay. dang it! I will never remember how to do this. Try, try let's try the the copilot. Okay, so show this if let's see what's here. And there's two ways. Yeah. No, no, that's wrong. I think it's confused. use razor syntax to show to apply the link editable class if editable is true. Is that I mean, right? Yes. Yes, that looks right. All right. Is that right, chat? Now it can't do this, right? This isn't right. Or can it? Is that okay? Uh, I think you can. Yeah, it's in quotes. Yeah, but these are single quotes. Doesn't this make it like a character or something in C sharp? No, because it's inside a string. Okay. So we took care of that. Nice. And then yeah. um, let's just say uh, wrap this. Uh, only show this. Only using razor syntax. <laughs> only <laughs> well, show this. You could also get rid of the v dash if. Oh yeah, we can. So does this is this what we want? If editable, yes, yes. Copilot starting to. Yeah, the, it's getting happier. Where's the v if? We remove it. Where's the v if? Yeah, I think we deleted it. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone by dawn. Okay, so. We are moving right along here, and we want to do the same thing here. 
which is now I don't even need to look, right? I just know that it's if editable. Yep. No. Nope. 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 Yes, that's right. We're getting some formatting now. It's not perfect, but it's trying. Boom, boom. What is this? Please stop doing this. I don't know why it's mad about something. All right. And then uh, if editable, let's see if Copilot can do it. Is that everything in here? No. <laughs> nope. Nope. Okay. So if editable, escape. Editable, editable. <laughs> Losing it. Why do we do this on a Friday? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a question I ask myself sometimes. I'm trying not to work too hard on Fridays. Okay. Other than the fact that BS Code is literally shouting in my face, I feel pretty good about this. Oh, there's there's so many squigglies. Look at this. <laughs> right. This is not going to work. Okay, fair enough. Comment from Surly. Not oh, sure if this is where I mean, we're work. writing code. That fair, we're yeah. Good point. Okay. We're spending Microsoft's time working on a uh, project. <laughs> okay, what is what is your damage? Unclosed tag div with no matching end. Fair enough. Razor, you should fix that for me. Is that asking too much? So where is the unclosed tag? Maybe is I'm it, is it here? It. It must be here because this is the one that's highlighted. No, I mean, everything's highlighted. All right, let's start collapsing. It's possible I was wrong about saying, see there, it's a if. Okay, now it's up here. That looks right. Yeah, I get suspicious too that like at click dot prevent. But now it's fine. I no, didn't I works. didn't close any divs. I don't know. It doesn't like this. Yeah, well you don't need that also, by the way. Don't I? Oh. Yeah, because so, we're handling it on click. Yeah. Open link. What didn't we on the other form? We just did, used an A tag. Yeah, it should be on the overlay. Where's the where is the click event? Question from a new on line five. What is at? Class? It doesn't exist. We don't need this. Yeah. Just My, to sure. Yeah, we'll go to line five here in a second. Yeah, generally I'm yeah. learning like you can use JS runtime, but it's always it's not quite a code smell, but it slightly is. Like it's always something to I don't like the way it looks. I yeah, like it's something like, naughty. <laughs> more and more, and like I use it when I am using a JavaScript library for the most part. All right. So what was the question about link? Yeah. Line yeah. Oh, yeah, five. yeah. So like if you were so if we use the sortable library, which I feel like I want to make a Blazor component there that is, uses sortable. There is a Blazor component that's sortable. That uses the sortable library? You don't need the sortable library. There's a Blazor implementation of sort of, sortable. Sortable JS. Well, it's the same thing. So there's a, a, yeah, there's a Blazor library that does exactly what sort of I've that? seen that one, but the sorting experience in that is super limited, number one. And number mm -hmm. two, I don't like the interaction in it. Like, and that's not a slam on it. It's just that from the coming from the front end, you have something like sortable JS, which just gives you all sorts of control over how things look, how they move, the easing. And I really mm -hmm. like that. I don't want to lose that. That's fair. Well, we should do an entire stream just on that sorting thing, I think. Maybe we do a battle, a bake-off. A bake-off on sortable. All right. <laughs> so 
We so the question should at yeah 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 line five and Oop is right yeah that at shouldn't have why does that have an at sign the at the at should be after the quote before the parentheses on line four sorry not five it shouldn't be at class it should it be class, be class equals class. and then the at there ah and see you can't use the single yeah quote. yeah yeah no. that's okay okay we can blame copilot on this a bit because it copilot... led us astray and this is why ai will not be taking your job <laughs> Okay, but then, yeah, okay. Uh, how did we do this before? Oh, but you've got, now you've got class equals link wrapper. Because there's two classes. So yeah. we want link wrapper and then yeah. we want the rest of this business. Beautiful. But yes, okay, that works, right? Yep, yep. We've done this so many times, you'd think we'd be good. I, at <laughs> I think, yeah. Yes, yeah, so let's restart the app. And then I feel like, oh man, I feel like we are we're there. Copilot added a secondary class on one div. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, these large <laughs> language models, they are not compilers. Like uh Seth had to explain this to me. He's like, it doesn't know anything. It's not a compiler. It doesn't know how to code. It doesn't know anything. All it's doing is guessing which word comes next. Mm -hmm. So you got to be ready for that. You got, and once you realize that, you don't get so mad when it's off. Yeah, you yeah. understand that it's 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 not thinking. It's just like mashing words together in patterns it's seen before. Exactly. All right. So can we go to localhost five thousand? Localhost five thousand. Yeah. Can we, can okay. We go to. Well, you got a browser open, just like Googleify, um, Wolfram, Chat GPT. Uh, that's what is it doing? Yeah. Why does it work? Yeah. I have <laughs> read this. I did not okay. understand it, dude. I I had to sit. I had to come back to it a few times. It's a lot there. I feel like I kind of fooled myself into thinking I got it. And then like, I would love to see someone actually present this and talk through it. I mean, this is like Oppenheimer splitting the atom <laughs> level stuff right here to me. Okay, Like what it's two thirds of the way down. There's a really cool thing that kind of lit things up for me where it shows a 2d map of a bunch of words. And it's like, Cat is closer to eagle than it is to vacation. Holy and smokes. Look at the scroll bar. I know. It's freaking, it goes forever. But they're like, right? So it's clustering things together. And this started to make more sense to me. Like, okay. And then there's this thing of like temperature where you can say like, how creative do you want it to be? Right. That I know. So, right. so it's kind of like, okay, if you want to pick what comes after this word. So that's how it can kind of clump things together. Cause there's no way you can say, what is every combination of five words in any language? There's, it's like exponential how quickly it grows. Look, yeah, this is a book just as a web page. I know, man. I'm still scrolling. <laughs> well, you're scrolling up and down. <laughs> Some light we can read. Woof. Did you put that in the chat for everybody so they can read it? Oh, that? I should. I should. Okay. Let me do that. While you do that, let's let's see if that works so we can end this stream for the love. Yeah. Test 101. Come on. Yes. Yes. All right. So work. okay. This is, but it's not sh it's not showing editable is false, and these things are still editable. So what? This should work. Why does that not work? Oh, because it's just a pointer. So let's go down. If editable, no. That's how that goes. Yep. All right. There we go. 
All right. Nancy, unhandle there. We have there. fixed this page. And wow. I feel good about it. Okay, yeah. you convinced me. I was I was not believing you. Right? This is a, this is a decent model and then it could be refactored, but like Yeah. The only the only other thing here is like there's this is going to bug the crap out of me. I'll yeah. have to fix this. Somebody put in a PR to remove this <laughs> spacing. Why is this so, here? Okay, so that's a fair thing. Like we will take PRs if like we've been reviewing my PRs at the beginning of Yeah, we'll thing. review your PRs. If you can re yeah. if you can fix this, we're reviewing your PR. Um okay. why is there an unhandled error? It's probably the freaking wasm Stuff. As long as somebody is the one PR we will not review is I resharpened your code. Do you ever get those? I reformatted all your code. <laughs> no, yeah, we're not doing that. Um, all right, that's so it. Is, so let's go over to. Yeah. So you're going to buy the phone. Probably not. I don't have that kind of money. And <laughs> let's go. Let's go to our projects. Oh yeah, we can. We wanted to create fix editor visibility for public view. Is that it? Yes, this is it. Okay, so you can drag and drop that dude. To, is that in progress or done? That's, this is done, but we need to do um, add. QR code and list view. I would, let's do two separate, or should we do two separate bugs? Add QR code as one and... Okay, yeah. Well, no, because it's really the same thing. Once you have okay. the QR code, you're just toggling between what's already there. So Surly Dev is asking PR to change spaces to tabs is a waste of time. I say yes. no, it's all tabs. I love the tabs. I'm all tabs. All right. <laughs> Okay. So what about this one? This is still in progress or? Uh, you can. I mean, I'm in favor of closing an issue and logging a smaller issue. All right. You so know what I mean? Log here. Um, Do, so one is don't allow creating the same vanity. You have existing vanities in add link function. Right? Yeah. I'm trying to spell things correctly. Existing. Existing. <laughs> okay. Um, the other one is return correct error message from add links when. Well, I feel like that's part of this one. Yeah. It is it, or do we need better? For other, okay. Yeah, either way. Or okay, yeah, let's leave it like this. And we're at time. So I think we're done for today. So next time, what are we doing? So next yeah. time we need to add, I think we should add, right? We put this in and then it takes us to the edit page. Okay which we don't have. All we have right now is the public page. So the edit page is going to be the same way, but we're just going to pass in editable. Actually, no, we're just passing page. editable to the public page. Mm -hmm. No, so, we're not. We're not. We need a new page that uses that same component that is the ad page. The ad and edit pages are different experiences. It's not okay. the same. Do they need to be? I mean, car carrying forward the design that you've used. Um, well, we can decide that as part of it, but we could create an issue that is allow adding or create ad page. The implementation may be that. It yeah, we need to talk about it. I think we can just do that for next time, which is what we said we were going to do this time and didn't do. So we'll just do the same thing that we said okay. we were going to do. We'll actually do it next week. Oh, creating the ad link experience part two. Part two. <laughs> <laughs>
Die Harder. Okay. <laughs> Dude, have you seen the new uh, Expendables um, movie poster, trailer. movie trailer? I have. And it says they'll die when they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. We didn't even get into the Oppenheimer, the Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer. Um, I'm seeing Barbie this afternoon. Yeah, we saw yeah. Chad. Did you see Oppenheimer? What's I saw story? Oppenheimer. We were gonna. We were talking about it beforehand. We didn't get into it enough here. No. Oh, and your take was? I thought it was decent. I thought it was a little. I thought it was a half hour, forty five minutes long. It was like you could have compressed some significant parts without. Yeah, it was a little, a little much. And then make it a director's cut for like the diehards. I guess just the politics at the end. I just. It's like. Politics used to be super boring, and that to me is like old, super boring politics. That I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if you you're losing your security clearance. I'm sorry. It look if it affected his life and he was going to lose his job, I get it. But they don't convey that very well in the movie. They don't convey anything that was lost by him not having a security. Clearance. Exactly. Other than he doesn't want to lose his security clearance, or like they're yeah. discrediting him by removing his security clearance. Your average American doesn't care. Which I did, I did like listen to a history podcast I like, the rest is history, and they were talking about he was advocating against the H bomb, and he was like, if he had the security clearance, he could have done some things because he had this voice as the creator of the atom. And they just didn't. They wanted to to get rid of him from pushing back against the creation of the hydrogen bomb. Yeah, and and nuclear proliferation and stuff. So. But they should have made that case, right? They didn't end the movie. Yeah, I feel like the next thing I say is going to be something about the government. And that's a good note to close. There you go. (laughs) Okay. Wonderful. I will play us out. Next time we will again create that link. But I feel like we got a decent amount done. We got that edit. We're cooking with gas, as they say. We got my pull request finally closed. So, All right, we're out. See you, Chad. Have a great weekend. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Let's thanks for watching.